Hello and welcome to my seventh painting of Richmond Park, not including the little postcard sketches. I did think it was the sixth, but I've just counted up and it will be the seventh. So five more to go and I'll have done every month for a year. So this one is September and let's get on with it. I'm starting off with a very quick blocking. You may notice there's a few little bits I missed, a little gap between the main tree and I forgot the trunk of the far tree. Never mind, I'll fill them in on the next pass. I've gone over the sky again, choosing a blue, and then as I go down the panel, I keep adding a little bit of white to it to lighten the sky as I get closer to the horizon. And then in a very simple way, I indicate the far tree line. No need to go too detailed on that bit. In front of that tree line, there are some closer trees, and they have quite light coloured trunks. So now's a good time to just put those in. Before I start painting the trunk of the main tree, I'm going to simply paint some leaves that will be at the back and that will save me having to paint those leaves and have to worry about accurately going up to the edge of the trunks and branches. I've waited a little bit of time for those leaves to dry as the next stage is to block in the silhouette of the main tree. If I hadn't waited for the leaves to dry, I'd have had all sorts of problems getting a crisp edge up to those leaves. And as I'm using fast drying oils, the Winsor & Newton Griffin Alkids, I only had to wait two or three hours. The colour I've used for the blocking of the tree is close to the darkest colour I'm going to use on it. And it's basically Lysium Crimson and Burnt Umber, which get close to black if you mix them evenly. But I've put more blue in and added a fair bit of Lysium Crimson to give it a very slight purple look. If you look closely on the reference photograph, you can see that slight purple colour, but I've exaggerated it here. Plus there's a little bit of white in there as well, as without that it was too dark. While I was going on about the colours used in the silhouette, I've moved on to the next stage and that's to add some white to the mix, plus a tiny bit of yellow to warm the colour and start painting where the light hits the tree bark. On this tree the bark is very prominent as it's an old oak tree, probably hundreds of years old. And when you get an area that's more in direct line to the sun, especially a low sun, this was late in the day. The colours on the object the sun's hitting will be warmer. So with this light colour, I'm tracing the lines of the bark. Also a major part to the painting of this trunk and branches is in the scene there are a lot of trees out of shot. So most of this tree is in shadow. And there's odd spots here and there, particularly on the lower trunk. There are areas where the sun has hit directly and they have become very yellow in this setting sun. This has made a yellow that I can't quite mix with my usual cadmium yellow pale so I've had to live dangerously and break out the cadmium yellow. The odd spot I use it neat but mostly it's toned down with a bit of French ultramarine, just a very tiny amount and a little bit of white as well just to kill the saturation and save the pure pigment for the really intense areas. After this initial bark detail pass, I've let it thoroughly dry and then mixed up some French ultramarine and Bertumba again and a touch of white to stop it being close to pure black. Then thinned the paint a lot with solvent and using a soft brush I've gone over this detail to just darken some of it a little to give the bark a little more form. With it all being one flat colour it makes the branches and the trunk look flat so just darkening off one side a bit helps to give the whole thing form. Then after a quick drying of that being high in solvent probably only takes half an hour I start refining the areas of the bark in direct sunlight. Try to re-establish some of the deep cracks with the same dark colour I had just done the wash with but this time without much solvent. I've just taken my tree and texture brush to splodge a dark pattern over the ground area. It needs to dry thoroughly so I just quickly did that before starting. What I'm doing now is the leaves that are in front of the branches and trunk. With these foreground leaves on the main tree I'm going to the usual plan and starting with the darkest colour first and putting the leaves in quite simply by putting a good amount of paint on the brush and just dabbing it which gives a sort of slightly teardrop shaped overall 
mark which is quite good for a leaf that's close enough to be able to make out individually but not so close you can see any detail. I'm looking closely at the reference photo but I'm not matching it leaf for leaf. I'm just seeing the pattern of the leaves and you've got to remember leaves come out of branches or twigs. So as I'm dabbing the leaf I'm making a pattern in lines not totally random which would look unnatural and when I've gone over the whole area I'll start again with a lighter colour and put some more in but not so many and then finally for the leaves that are in direct sunlight I choose a yellow colour and spot those in and there's far fewer of those. Now I've moved on to the ground and most of the ground is a thick carpet of ferns with a few other creeping sort of plants mixed among them. So the plan of action here is choose a quite dark green and paint the whole ground in, not taking any notice of all the different shades of green and yellows that will ultimately be in there. I just want a background texture of fern shapes and other plant shapes. This will then be left to dry before I take another go at it. After this first pass of painting the ferns, it's all looking very flat monochrome. So I decided to put a thin wash in some of the areas to darken parts of it, pretty much like I did on the tree, and give the colours there a bit of variety to make it look more natural. Now the wash is just a greatly thinned down dark pigment, and to thin it I use white spirits, which I believe also can be known as mineral spirits. I'm doing this because all I've got underneath is very thin very dry paint i wouldn't dream of putting that type of wash over thick oil paint and especially not standard oil paints which can take a very long time to dry you may think they're dry because they've got a hard surface <coughs> but underneath they'll still be soft for many months and putting this thin layer over the top greatly risks this top coat cracking in months to come or possibly years so if you have used ordinary oil paints and put them on a little bit thick not super thin like I've done here you would choose something like a liquid or linseed oil to thin the paints and put this glaze over but in this one instance and one instance only I can get away with solvents which has the advantage of drying extremely quickly the last thing I've got to do is put the highlights on the odd fern that's just at the right angle to the sun which will help to bring the whole area to life and the final final is the odd fern that has caught the direct sunlight and turned very yellow this will tie it in into the rest of the scene where the leaves and tree catch this bright sun as another painting comes to an end i hope you enjoyed watching and i especially thank all those who watched the whole painting rather than skip to the end and i hope to see you all on the next video thank you for watching goodbye